Back to the Public Gardens GIS training series. This is lesson four. Today we'll learn how to prepare to collect data out in the field using the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model. As in previous lessons, we'll need to have a computer running Windows XP or better, the Arc Editor or Arc Info license level of Esri's ArcGIS Desktop 9 or 10 software. And we'll also need a Windows Mobile based data collection device running Esri's ArcPad 8 or 10 software. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we are back at the computer. Okay, the first thing we're going to do to get started with today's lesson is to open a web browser and download the lesson data from the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS website as we did in lesson three. So again, type in the address www.apgg.org, the address bar your web browser. And once you get to the site, scroll down to where it says downloads under public garden data model and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and under the Public Garden GIS training series there should be a file for lesson four. Click on download and then as in lesson three we're going to save this to our working folder and since that was the last place I went it opened right back up to it. Uh, if it doesn't do that for you uh, you'll need to navigate to the location of that folder. Go ahead and save it and then we will close the web browser and open Windows Explorer and browse to the location on your hard drive where you saved it. For me it's in CGIS and UC Davis Arboretum. You may have named that folder uh, according to the name of your garden. When you get in there you'll see some of our leftover files probably from previous lessons. Uh, first thing we're going to do though is we're going to extract uh, the lesson four uh, files into a new folder. And as I mentioned before, depending on what kind of file compression software you have on your computer, the process for this may be different. Many people can right click on it and hit extract. Uh, in my case, I have to hit open with WinZip here. So I'm using WinZip. And I'm going to unzip it. And it's going to ask me where I want to put that. And I'm going to put it right into that same location that we've been uh, using. I'm going to make a new folder called Lesson 4. And I'll unzip to that. Oops. And it looks like I didn't do that correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. Now I'll hit unzip and then it, then it does it correctly for us. Okay, so there's a few files in here that are of interest. We've got these top three files um, make up an aerial photograph for the East Asian section of uh, the UC Davis Arboretum, which is where we're going to prepare to collect our data. And then there are two text files in here, one called scientific name and one called source accession number. And these are files I generated from our plant records database, which I'll go into a little bit more detail about later, but they essentially can't contain a list of all the scientific names uh, for the East Asian section of our garden, and then another file containing all the uh, accession numbers for the plants in the East Asian section of our garden. And again, there's another geodatabase uh, preloaded with the uh, public garden data model in there ready to go. So we can go ahead and close that folder close WinZip if that's still open for you and close the other folder and that'll conclude the download section. Okay so now that we have the lesson data downloaded and extracted to a folder on our hard drive we're gonna do a little preparation uh, in getting ready for data collection. To do that we're gonna open our catalog here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically create some drop-down lists so that when we're collecting data out in the field, instead of having to type in the scientific name or the accession number for a plant, we're going to create some, some pick lists or drop down lists so that we can just uh, select them instead of having to do any typing, which on mobile devices can be a little bit tricky. 
So when you get our catalog open, uh, navigate to the folder uh, where we've been working. And for me, that's my CGIS UC Davis Arboretum. And I've created that Lesson 4 folder in there where I extracted all the data to. And as I mentioned previously, you'll, we have a geodatabase that has uh, all of our data model objects in it. We have uh, an, a raster data set here that contains an aerial photo of uh, the East Asian section of the UC Davis Arboretum. And then these two text files here uh, that contain a list of all of our scientific names and source succession numbers uh, for that section. If I click on this file and hit preview, you know, it's not going to show me a preview, so we'll just have to, to live with that. Essentially, these files are uh, they're set up so that it's just one column uh, that has the, the name of the field at the top, which is scientific name, and then a list of all the different scientific names inside of that section. Uh, and same with source succession number. It just has a, a column header on it and then a list of all of those succession numbers. I feel like I should maybe show you what these files look like really quick. And a good way to work with these kind of files are uh, in Microsoft Excel. So if I open up Excel here, and hopefully that did it, and it will open. There it is. I can open up that file by navigating to where our working folder is, lesson four. If you hit the type thing on the side here. You can select all files and then we'll see our scientific name file. Select it and open it. And he asks you what kind of text file is this? How are the, the fields delimited? Um, so how does it know how to put things into columns essentially? And uh, I'm going to leave it on delimited here because they are delimited. And how is it delimited? Uh, sometimes it's they're usually by tab or by comma. I usually check both of them. And I'll take care of it for you. But there's only one column in this data, so it's nothing fancy to, to split up. But essentially, as you can see here, we've got a list uh, of all of our scientific names in alphabetical order, with the top of the list being the column header, and it's just the name of the field, scientific name, and then a list of all of our scientific names. And that goes all the way down. So if you have a plant records database, uh, you can go into that database, and usually there's some kind of summarize or export feature in which you can create a text file that will just list all of the uh, all the different names inside uh, a particular field. So that's the formatting of that file. I'm not going to save it. So as I mentioned, we have one for scientific name and one for source succession number. So what we're going to do now to, to turn these into drop-down lists in the data model is use uh, some geoprocessing tools which are built into ArcGIS. And to get those, we're going to open the Arc Toolbox window here from the top. And that window will take a second to get open. To get that, op that window open, you can click on the top of it and drag it until these uh, little blue arrows come up in ArcGIS 10. And if you click on one of them, it'll dock it to the side. It makes it kind of convenient. And if I want to close that, I can unclick the pin here, and it just kind of minimizes off of the side. It's pretty slick. Uh, I'm going to keep it open for the purpose of the lesson here, but what we're going to do is basically turn this text file or table uh, into a domain in the geodatabase. To do that, you go to Data Management Tools, and you go to Domains here, and there's this little tool that turned a table into a domain. If you double click on that, it asks you, what's your input table? And we're going to start with scientific name. You can just drag that right from the contents tab or right in there. And then I ask you, what field in here is going to represent the code that's going to be used in this domain? And the way that the data model is set up, we use the same thing for the code and the description for the domain. Codes usually can be in things like numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4. And then when you use that number in the database, that equals a value, such as uh, a scientific name or an accession number. But to make things easy um, and simple, we use the same values for both so there's no confusion. Uh, so when you click the drop down here, it only gives you one choice, scientific name, and scientific name for both sides. And then the input workspace, that's going to be our geodatabase. So I'm going to drag that right in there. And then the name of the, the, the domain uh, is going to be scientific name. 
But because this is just our list of scientific names for the East Asian section, I'm going to add East Asian onto the end of this so that we can differentiate if we're going to collect data in other sections, we can have a list of scientific names for each section. And then when we're out in the field, we're not accessing one list that has every scientific name for our entire garden, which could get quite long. In the domain description, this is a, a, a spot to kind of describe what this domain is used for. And you can see that I've already uh, created this domain uh, in the geodatabase, so it brings up uh, a list or uh, the, the description that I've already typed in. And this is the this is kind of the standard format for d that we describe the domains in there because a domain is a list of valid values that you're going to pick from a list. And then I'd say which feature class it's going to since we're going to be this is for plants it's going to go to the plant center feature class as we've wor worked with previously. And then what's the name of the field scientific name. And since this is for the East Asian section I also write that in there. So it asks me how do I want to uh, append values to this list or uh, the other option is to replace and since we've already created that uh, I'm going to use replace so we don't get any duplicate values. But since I've done the work of typing this here I'm just going to copy this and paste it back in here so we don't have to type it again. Okay, and once you've got all these filled in you can hit the OK button. And with ArcGIS 10, these geoprocessing tools now run in the background. So you can see down at the, the lower part of the screen here that it's working on it. And when it's all done, it's going to pop up a little uh, uh, message box in the lower right-hand corner telling us that it's done. There it is. And now to make sure that this worked, we can uh, get the properties by right-clicking on the geodatabase. And then it brings up two tabs here. One's the general, and then here's the domains tab. So click on domains. And if we scroll down, uh, these are in alphabetical order. We scroll down, there's our scientific name for the East Asian section. And you can see that it's created a list with, uh, there's that code field, and there's the description field, same on both sides. It goes all the way down, and then we've added a, a value for unknown scientific name at the end of the list uh, in case you're out in the field and you don't know what the plan is. Okay, so that's that. Go ahead and click OK to close that. And now we're going to do the same thing again for the source succession number domain. So click on table to domain again. Input table is going to be source succession number. The code field from the drop down list is going to be source succession number. Same for description. Input workspace, we're going to click and drag our geodatabase in there. And then the domain name is going to be source succession number. And we're again, we're going to add East Asian onto the end of this because uh, this is again just for our East Asian section. And then it brings up this description which I'm just going to go ahead and copy and then change it to the replace option to replace what I've already done. And then go ahead and paste that back in there. And hit OK. And again the geoprocessing tool runs in the background. And when it's done, it will pop up a little message box for us. There we go. And it's always a good good idea, again, to, to validate that this works. So right-click on your geodatabase, hit Properties, scroll down to the S's, source succession number, and there you go. Got a list of all of our accession numbers. And your accession numbers may be in a far different format than, than ours, but uh, again, this field should be able to accommodate whatever format they're in. Okay, hit OK, and now we are essentially done uh, creating those domains. And now what we can do is uh, assign them to the Plant Center feature class. And to do that, we can use a geoprocessing tool here called Assign Domain to Field. And what's the, what we're going to do essentially is assign those, those new lists of values to the source succession number field and the scientific name field inside the Plant Center's feature class so that the database essentially knows that we want to have this drop-down list of those values.